Right, Paul, then, so it's a, it's a year at Shrewsbury Town today. I've got a few images of, of the 12 months and we sort of dissect highlights from each month, maybe. Um, yeah. Of course, this was your first day when we did the unveiling, a uh, lot of press and all that, but the overriding, how was the excitement? How, how was the emotion on, on that day and the days before it? I think it was, uh, in truth, a pretty stressful sort of couple of days. Um, from losing... Unfortunately, my last game, as it turned out, in charge at, at Grimsby. Uh, there'd been a lot of speculation going into that game. And then over the course of, of the weekend, a few conversations that you know, were not particularly uh, great ones. And Shrewsbury just confirming the fact that they wanted to bring me into the football club. Um, and then Sunday, it was you know, some converse, uh, conversations, you kind of bit of hanging around, wait for the phone to go, and then eventually, you know, it was a, everything was agreed and started work at Shrewsbury Town the following day when, you know, it's a early start, drive down, meet people, and addressing the players, watching training for the first time, um, you know, meeting yourselves, getting the, all that in, the interviews out of the way. So it was, um, I don't know, it is almost a little bit like a whirlwind. You get thrown into a situation and you're kind of just doing your duties. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of other things that kind of, as in where we're going to live, things like that, <laughs> that were um, very much up in the air, but I just wanted to take the challenge on. And it became apparent very quickly that it was one hell of a challenge to take on. Was it not until you saw the squad and, and that that you, you realised what sort of challenge? Because on paper, on the table, it was six points, which in October isn't too... Yeah. No, I think it was more... The actual points difference, as you say, it wasn't the absolute end of the world. Uh, but having a third of the season gone, I think the negativity that was clearly around... Um, I know that some fans, obviously, are not pleased when their team's losing, but... I think it was almost the manner in which the team was losing as well that was a uh, very concerning. I think just on the back of of Danny Coyne taking charge, that I think you know again you, you get to know more as you 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 work at a football club. I think he was put in an almost impossible position, and uh, knowing him very well now, how professional he is, I'm sure it hurt him. You know, on a hell of a lot to uh, to be put in the position he was and probably felt let down by some individuals during that period. So that and then out watching them train, again, very clear there was a, a sort of strange atmosphere. Not, never going to be the, the happiest place in the world, but it just, you know, I, I, it was blatantly obvious from day one that we were going to need some changes moving forward. But the, the sort of short term goal was to try to get those players on board and get the best out of them and see where that would take us. The, the overriding fear, you know, of after the first couple of days, certainly, we lost Joe Riley, who was one player that we looked as though he got the energy and drive um, that we would require, um, got injured. And then you just start to think, are we actually going to get to January and be in a position to, you know, make some changes and give ourselves a fighting chance of staying in the league. So that was very quickly a fear that um, I think me and Chris were aware of. You know, I said in a, another interview that after a couple of days we sat down in the office at, at the ground and I think we were both sort of sat in, in silence almost, but I think we probably both knew what each of us was thinking and we're really questioning what we'd let ourselves in for. Um, that's nothing against stadium etc all of that side and lots of things were positive but the nitty and gritty of it is getting results on a Saturday and that looked certainly very worrying um, and we questioned whether or not we you know we could change it. Interestingly now 365 days ago if someone you know crystal ball would have said this is how it's going to look what would you have thought I mean? I thought there's something wrong with them they needed to be taken away and perhaps put on some kind of uh, medication. Because I don't think we're the best one in the world anyone could have 
envisage the, the transformation that has taken place, you know, how different the team looks now. Um, the feel around the club generally is just massively different. And um, yeah, we, we, we had the team photo yesterday, we trained at the ground and, you know, we, you know, we like going to the ground. It's a good stadium to play in front of. But when you're there for training, a different feel to it. And it certainly made me reflect yesterday. It was a bit strange having it as that day to bike when we first came in. And it didn't seem good. <laughs> it wasn't the, uh, you know, the happiest of memories, albeit I was, you know, I probably came in with optimism and, and hope. But like I said, after a couple of days in the job, it, start to really um, question your own sanity and, and the decisions that we, that we make. So, um, so now when I picked this image, it was the, uh, the first home win in the league anyway. Yeah. Uh, you won against Barnet, was it, in the FA Cup? Uh, that was the second in a 2-0, uh, 98th minute I think Sean scored that goal. So, a bit of nerves in that one towards the end, bit of uh, biting the fingernails. Yeah, they will have been. Um, I think at that point, in, in all honesty, as much as I wanted to come in and make a good impression and, and get you know the fans on side for one, because I think there was some you know question marks over myself and I you know kind of understand why, um, but it didn't feel massively under pressure, and I think in fairness that's credit to sort of the chairman and uh, Brian Caldwell. I think there was almost an acceptance that we, we weren't in a in good shape. Mm. As long as we could see some kind of improvement, um, we didn't have the players available. Like say Sean's the one out and out winger that we had, who was injured, mm. and then finally we got him fit. Then he gets injured again, so it was tough because we couldn't even play particularly the way that I wanted to uh, him for, for a little while. But that was a great moment, you know, there was good celebrations, although it was so early, you know, Sean, I think, running over to Skitty and, you know, the sort of how he feels in terms of how he was out with his, his rehab, etc. And then the staff, to say that me and Chris had only just starting to get to know them, really. I can remember us having a bit of a sort of, almost sounds a bit, um, better be careful what I said, PC here. <laughs> But a bit wet. Um, we had a little sort of group huddle when that had gone in as well, and yeah, it was it was great to get that first to win at home in in the league, and um, yeah, it certainly brings back some memories of that game with Sean's very composed finish after running, I think half a length, maybe more of the pitch to to get the opportunity. In December, I picked another win. I missed um, down at Millwall. Uh, not one many saw coming at all, I, I don't think, but an interesting display. Well, I think Millwall saw her almost battered time for, time for much, but, but what a win. There's a theme here that maybe you should stay away if you miss this one as well. Um, no, I think that day, we, look, we had some, um, certainly had to be on the, or, or were forced to be on the rear guard at times. They missed a couple of opportunities, perhaps they would have liked to have done better. Um, I think it was Jason made a few good saves in that game. But I never felt it was quite as bad as what people made out. Um, but it was a, a performance that was firstly won by an excellent goal from Dodze, a good combination player with, with Ivan Tony. But we saw some desire in that game, I think. That was the biggest thing. You know, uh, there was a real togetherness to see the uh, result out and get a, a much needed victory. And I think that game probably helped, you know, the players. Like I say, I'm not saying it's not been like some of the performances we've seen more recently where they played some really good football on top. But at the same time, you, you've got to start somewhere, and, and that game really was togetherness. We, we played with a system that we wanted to play then. I think Ryan McGiven was in at left back. We had to cope with his injury in that game as well. Um, so it was a big victory, obviously, at Millwall, where there's an atmosphere in the ground and um, something of a surprise. I think I can remember getting on the coach after the game and 
the chairman with a big grin on his face and almost like what's happened there. Um, and it was nice to reward the fans that have travelled that, you know, it's hard when you're trying to stick with your team when, when things aren't going well. So that was certainly a, a good day for us. You spoke of questioning yourself and doing your sanity a couple of days into the job, yet, you know, two months less later, you're getting wins like that. Did you, did you start, started to believe by that point? Did that point help you start to believe that we could salvage this season? Um, you hope so. I, I was just pleased that, like I said, I saw some fight and desire in the performance. A little bit more energy. I think that was one of the games Junior um, did particularly well in. I, playing up one but working back and cause he was having to play in the wide left position uh, for us. But it, I think, like I said, very quickly the idea was to get to January and I knew that there were some changes would occur. You know, that wasn't something that I went to the chairman with in January and we started saying, can I make changes? We were very clear that that was realistically going to be the plan. How many wasn't a, a definite. Yeah. And these lads that we inherited had the first opportunity. What I would say that I don't think we've spoke about and, and maybe messing the, the order up, but we've, by this stage, Anthony Sarsovich had left the football club. Moar had left. Andy Mangan had left, so we were trying to sort of put a stamp on the club as well. Um, and you know, I think Mangan was different. He, he'd had an offer yeah. to go and work with, with Mickey back uh, at Tranmere. So I was, you know, he just didn't seem happy at the football club. I think that was the, the big thing. And you know, more, I just couldn't see a way forward there. Yeah. So. That kind of laid down a bit of a marker as well to the players, and that if they wanted to be part of it, you know, sort of get on board with what we're trying to do. And I have to say, the, the majority of them did that. A couple of um, tough moments around Christmas, weren't there? We talk about the, the Bolton game on Boxing Day, where there was the, the penalty shout, and then Rochdale with that outrageous <laughs> decision um, on that night. But moving forward, as you say, to, to the Jan um, that you're hoping for, you got players in uh, as you wanted to, and one of them. Uh, sort of made a difference pretty early. Yeah, um, Freddie came in and you know I had a smile on his face, had an energy, along with you know some other changes that we made, um, made a big difference to us. Different feel. I think the team spirit improved. There was there was more togetherness, and during. Or between, certainly when we just spoke about, like we said, three left had left anyway, but I think another five left in, in January and, and eight players came in. So overall, we, we'd sort of balanced it out in terms of numbers. And the squad, in my opinion, was you know much improved. You're always gambling with a loan market because they're not your players. You, you know, you're banking on someone seizing that opportunity you know, buying into being part of your football club, even if it's not, you know, the parent one. And Freddie certainly at the ground running, made himself, you know, an instant sort of hero with a couple of goals and I think they call it dancing. Uh, um, certainly it's a few moves that I could only dream of <laughs> making. And, um, you know, I think just straight away, I think then realistically there was a feeling that we could you know, perhaps get out of the, the trouble we were in and and keep that League One status that we all desperately wanted. I was just going to ask you about that because the, the 2nd of January was that home defeat to Fleetwood, which you weren't too happy with at all. Um, but then, I mean, the run, it was only narrow wins, Freddie goals, but an unbeaten run for a long time. Presumably when Freddie was winning your games, you thought we sort of could be onto something now. We, we, the club were climbing out of the drop zone as well. I think we started to show a bit more uh, resilience as well. You know, the, the sort of goal scorer catches the headlines, but I think we'd, we kept some clean sheets. Yeah. You know, I, I think we'd all agree now when you look at this season as well, Toto coming in made a massive difference to us defensively. Set plays, we weren't conceding as many set plays, which we you know, identified as an issue. And again, I don't think um, I have to be seen as a good, bad, indifferent manager to, to recognise that. I think most people had seen that that was a, an issue uh, for, for the squad. So, you know, that 
all of that helps if you if you keep in clean sheets. You've always got a chance of nicking a goal at some point in the game, and like I said, the feeling was was much better. The Fleetwood game you referred to, I think, I think that was the fourth game, was it? We got bored of playing each other, mm. and Toto sh we should have been allowed to play, but because it was over the new year, some people in certain positions decided they didn't want to work and. We weren't allowed to play him, which was a frustration. Um, had it been a different result, obviously you never know. But um, yeah, it was it was good, and it, it you know although there was obviously some players still there that weren't mine, and and still are realistically one or two, it just started to make it feel a bit more like the squad that we we wanted to work with. I picked uh, I mentioned that unbeaten run anyway. I picked out this game for for February. Uh, the, the win at Scunthorpe where, where Tyler Roberts and, and Freddie combined so brilliantly and I think there was a Peterborough defeat after this but I think at this point you were top of the form table you know fans were already sort of pinching themselves thinking oh we're out of this but I mean what a what a day and what a result that was they were unbeaten at home for 14-15 months I think yeah it was a long time and you know they were I think probably top two at the time we were certainly right up there um, with a very proud home record, and it looked a, a massive test. It was, but I don't think we, you know, we didn't nick a win there. Um, there was a little bit of pressure late on. It was a very competitive game, but it certainly wasn't a fluky win. You know, I think the lads played extremely well, and I think by this point we had got a belief. But to go somewhere like that with that record and a team that are at the top of the the league, we. You know, if we needed any sort of indication and a real game to prove it, that that was probably it. And we did lose the next game. You're right at Peterborough, where we had the, the man sent off. Um, but that was a massive effort, a very good goal with you know Tyler playing a, a major part in, in Freddie's good finish. And yeah, I think by that point, I never ever. So we just felt we were safe. It's too competitive, and when you've perhaps taken a team and changed its results around, you probably know that around the corner there's going to be a, a more difficult period. And you know, I think we're going to move on to probably that month next. Um, but no, we were in, you know, a good place then. I think, and the the players were, I think, enjoying. The hard work that they were needing to put into to get the results. I think February finished with that four three against Charlton, which is a bit of a different game than than most we've been used to under you. It was a win, but I guess you weren't overly impressed with it. And then, as we say, we, we move on to March, and I pick a, I pick a Port Vale game. Um, I remember it being a massive disappointment. I remember you keeping the players in the change room quite a while after it. Friday night, big following. Quite a disappointment at that stage. Yeah, I mean, if, if I can, I'll just speak about the Charlton game before we get on to that. That was, I think, probably everyone's game of the season, realistically. It was like a basketball game. We looked a real threat. I can remember looking at you know, the stats after the game, the running stats that we obviously I'm, I like to keep an eye on. That was the ice that we did. And then we played Coventry on the Saturday. And hindsight's a wonderful thing. But having won a game of that magnitude and the way that we'd played, certainly in an attacking sense, stuck with the same team. And like I say, hindsight, I should have probably made changes. We didn't have the energy to, to beat Coventry. Played out a nil-nil. The way that we played on the day, despite Coventry's you know lowly position. They started I with that 20 minute yes, as well. Yeah, at the start of the game when it, their lad had a, a bad knock to, to his head. It was it was a good point for us in the end. In truth, um, you know that the march was bad as, but we only had four league games. In truth, I think was it two defeats, two draws, uh, but probably against the teams that we were fighting to to stave off relegation, and maybe some games that we felt we'd have a, a better chance of winning. But as we all know, it's not played out on paper. Um, Port Vale being a local derby was. A big disappointment. It's a horrible night. You then got all weekend to stew on it. You know, I can remember driving home. Said conditions were terrible. I got sent some strange route uh, by the sat nav and past fallen trees and all sorts. And it, you know, it just kind of summed the night up for me. Uh, but the we had a few harsh words after that. 
and you know it, it was disappointing because we didn't perform until we made substitutions late in the game and had an impact. Dodds scored a good goal, couldn't quite get the equaliser, but thankfully you know the, that was one of sort of the few lows really that we've had to uh, encounter since since coming in. Big important derbies here, Port Vale game, and you get the feel that they didn't show nearly enough for a, for a derby match under the lights as well. Yeah, um, I think because we were, like I said, we're both down there scrapping. Obviously, Port Vale lost their uh, fight to, to stay in the in the division. I never particularly really got that feel that it felt like a derby on the evening. I don't know if it was because it was that so windy and rainy. It's a big, fast ground. You know, the pitch is big, and although we took a good following and I could hear them, they didn't seem that intensity there. Um, so yeah, it was a, you know, what like I said, one of the few real disappointments that we've had, and it, you know, if we needed it, I don't think we did need it. In fairness, but it made people just think, oh, are we, are we going to be okay? Yeah, um, maybe refocus. Like I said, a few harsh words spoken, and and you move on from that. It's all done with the right intentions that keep everyone together. I think it, from memory it was about making everyone understand the importance of each and every game. And you know, that game I felt like was one that we kind of just let slip. Wasn't at its best, certainly, to, uh, to get the result we wanted. March and a whole, we speak of it, of, of being a bit of, dis of a disappointment. Did you really worry that the amazing work you'd sort of done in the January and February was almost, you know, it could be for, for nothing after what happened in that month? Or? Yeah. Um... So it's difficult. So I can't, you know, and on or say exactly. I remember. I can remember, like, honestly, like I said, the drive home. I can remember walking uh, the dog the following day. I think I had pretty certain I had a conversation with Matt Sadler on the phone about the feel and moving forward. Um, and it it wasn't the, certainly one of the better moods I'd been in from. Um, you know my time at, at Shrewsbury, but I, I'm not sure whether I I really sort of felt that we we weren't capable of staying up still. Because um, again, I, when you're in the mix of it, it's harder. But I mean, it's certainly reflecting, and I think the run, like I said, we've been on from being a, a poor side realistically to then get the results still doesn't mean you're probably going to be brilliant straight away so it takes takes time and it probably did keep things interesting that's one way of putting it I suppose um, but no I think by that stage I'd always felt we'd, we'd certainly got a chance and I think again we have to remind ourselves of what where we were to appreciate the hard work that had gone in to at least giving us a, ourselves a chance and to change that mentality around you know, that was the, the biggest thing and, and we'd done that with that group of players. I think we all sort of acknowledged at the time that the running was a pretty difficult one. Um, getting to April, there was only sort of one moment, I suppose, that would sum the month up. But before that, there were defeats, weren't there? There were draws. Um, and, and on paper, was it Southend going for the playoffs, I think? Um, so, you know, maybe not the one you'd think, oh, that's the one we'll go and win. No, I think... Um, in the local paper, there'd been something along the lines of a run in and where they felt we would pick up points, where we might not. And again, it never works out like that, or very rarely. So we knew this would be a massive game, but his home form had been very good on the whole. Um, so we had that slight comfort that we were at home. They had the Rochdale win at the start of the month. Yeah, Steph that, scored. for me, that was a big one. Uh, Steph got the goal in that one. And then Junior gets a winning goal, like you see there, uh, against South End. But we were better than them on the day. You know, there's no two ways about that. Yes, there were some maybe airy moments because of the situation. You know, that was the penultimate game of the, of the season, his last home game. You know, we, we weren't absolutely safe, we weren't mathematically safe after that game. And it was a bit of a, you know, strange talk about the interviews. We'd done a sort of lap of the pitch to thank the fans for the support. It was probably, you know, deep down, you, you really th you think it should be fine. Anyway, let's put it that way. Maybe, although it's only one game, if we'd have 
results that have gone the way it would have needed to to have lost it would probably deserve to go down. Um, but no, I think that day was a lot of relief. You know, a lot of smiling faces. Well, like I say, at home we we had done well, and yeah. we needed to. I think we were too probably not fragile, but I, I we certainly couldn't bank on us away form to get us out of trouble. So that them own games were were big ones, and it, you know that was just a start for me. I think I during the the course of of taking over after a little while, I'd I called for more vocal support from the fans, and they responded. And between that, I think the bond between the players and the fans had, had grown. And like I say, it helped us have a, a very good home record and pick up some big victories that certainly played a massive part in helping us stay up last year. Junior said to us tongue in cheek recently in an interview that he sort of doesn't let the staff forget that moment. He says, hold on, I uh, remember what I did last season. Have you heard, does he still sort of pitch up about that one? or? No, I think you might be having your own unless you're telling the rest of the staff, but I can't um, recall him telling me about it certainly too often, but we know he, we know he can be a threat and, you know, I mean, you look at that, it's a it just looks a strange picture, he's only just, yeah. well, he's in the six-yard box, I mean, there he's on his actual belly, so, and it was a, a funny one because you could see that he was going to head the ball and knew he wasn't far out. But it's strange how, you know, suddenly from where I was, touchline, see the ball, well, don't see the ball go in the net in truth. Uh, bodies across, across you. Um, but by the reaction of the fans, and, the, you know, that was obviously a, a big goal for us. And um, a 1-0 victory, which was a, a relatively popular scoreline for us. And it would have been nice if we could have got another one to make it a bit easier. But the lads played well that day and, and thoroughly deserved that victory. We got uh, a pick of half of there for May, but I, I wanted to use it as a, as a chance. I, I guess when the season finishes, finished on 30th of April, you get a chance to have a couple of weeks to yourself and to your family, go away. I think you went on holiday a few times with you, America and, and others. Um, just talk a little bit about how, to the extent you could relax, and how much of a job you had on your hands at that point to, to rebuild? Yeah, I think once his um, status as a League One club had been confirmed, that perhaps you know, influences one or two decisions, target certain players, etc. But I think overall the decisions had, had pretty much been made you know, just prior to the end of the season. and. You know, you, you go through that period of, of speaking with players, you know, the bit that's not nice when you're releasing uh, some of them. Then trying to retain a couple of the lads, which we, you know, we managed to do. The ones that I wanted to stay, stayed. Um, and they got a sense of that they enjoyed sort of working under myself, that we would hopefully have a better season, certainly have a you know a better squad in place, a better feel around around the place. Um, and also some conversations with players that were still under contract yeah. that you know I didn't see being part of my plans. So again that's more try, you know just trying to be honest rather than trying to get interested in behind the backs and all of that. We tried to be honest about it, make for a few awkward conversations but you know, I think it's better to, to do that and be up front with them and over the course of the next couple of months near enough everyone's situation has been resolved um, in one way or another. It's a couple that we'll obviously have to look at revisiting come January mm. but in the main you know the, the squad dramatically changed um, and the rebuild you know we had to be patient I think, you know, like yourself again, you always wanting to, are we signing, are we signing anyone? And as I said, we were never going to be able to throw money at people, certainly, to just think, oh, I'm no point listening to anyone else, I'll just sign through for town. <laughs> so, um, yeah, patience was, was certainly our, our friend and, and that was the route we had to go down. So Arthur came in late May, I think he was, he was the first one, and it, it, you know, it wasn't a household name, it wasn't a name that fans were, oh, you know, look what he's done in the past high up, but 
he's a I suppose a symbol of the, the the manner of players that that came in lower leagues, you know, played non-league. Um, the mantra, the, the ethos was was young and hungry, wasn't it? Yeah, without a doubt, we we needed certainly people that were more athletic. The squad needed a, a you know a burst of energy, enthusiasm to it. Um, some of it, in, in truth, you kind of forced to go down a certain route because of, of competition for other players that perhaps you would like to bring in. But it, it fitted nicely with what we were, we were looking at. I know I'd said before about myself, Doigie, and the rest of the staff that kind of inherited at that point where we were set up. We were across the board, really, a very young staff, lots of energy. I think can relate to the players quite well. You know, so, you know some things I'm not sort of um, on the same wavelength as them. I'm not sure I'd want to be, but you know, we every one of them can speak to the players and have something in common along the way. And certainly a common thing was, I think we all you know are hungry for success and want to try and better ourselves. And that was part of the sort of drive to bring players in and, and to look at. But they have to be able to play as well, and you know, again, maybe myself to blame slightly was as we've moved forward, you know, talking about fitness and things like that. I've actually, got some good players as well, in, in fairness to the, to the lads, and that's I've surprised, I've been surprised by some of the football we've managed to play. I thought we'd have to win games in a different manner to yeah. than than what we have done on on quite a few occasions. I think your third or fourth signing was um, John Nolan and it's three three year deal, is it? Um, and thinking back to the quotes, I think you said something along the lines of "This is going to be a key player for us," you know, to fans who maybe hadn't heard of him before. But you know, straight away, uh, it's unfair to pick players out. But he's been one that's become a firm favourite, and already, you know, three goals made a big difference. Yeah, I mean, he was someone from memory that I just said is a good footballer. And that's kind of him. Added to the fact he's he's mobile, got a good engine, and felt they could add goals to his game. And he's certainly better his tally from last season. <laughs> um, comparing a lot with the Shrewsbury fans to Ryan Woods, I think they're very different players. In fairness, albeit they are both very comfortable on the ball, uh, but they could perhaps complement each other in the team. I think the, the ginger hair is the obvious um, comparison. But he has done extremely well for us, as many of the new signings have. Uh, but I think when you do look at it, the ones, you know, certainly a couple of them that I retained from last year, or we brought in, have stayed in the team, you know, like Asad's junior, Toto, Sean Worley more often than not. So there was still a little bit of a core of lads that had started to get some, you know, much better results than than what probably we had done before uh, before I came in. In July, um, you went away to Portugal, which we spoke about many times, being a big thing, fitness-wise, bonding-wise. Uh, then we entered the friendlies, so it was a, a tough run of friendlies, which I guess you want. Probably didn't expect four wins from from four championship clubs if you take away Telford and Brackley. Yeah. Um, and, and another example here, I suppose. You know, a young loney that fans wouldn't have heard of, and straight away he, he made an impact, even against a former England captain. Yes, yeah, you know that was a lot was made of John Terry. I think it was his first game for Villa. Um, I can remember Sky being there and sat in the coach's room and coming across to the stadium and the big news that John Terry was playing, and it was just nice to be able to take part in a game that John Terry was being part of. That's how it felt. <laughs> uh, um, but no, what was very pleasing, certainly in a couple of the games, because they were, you know, local ones, we had good crowds in, so it felt a little bit more... I mean, we, myself and Chris, you know, you don't like the term friendly, don't like pre-season, because you can get games where it's a bit nicey-nice, and, and I'm not sure if the teams that we play can perhaps enjoy playing against us. <laughs> But it was it was key for us, you know. We wanted. To, can't say that you know we knew we were going to get results against these teams, but 
we wanted to bring standards to, to performances individually and, and collectively and pre-season was the first opportunity to do that and after I have to say uh, you know a fantastic uh, week away in Portugal where it, it was really good still the, you know a few lads brought in after that it, the ideal scenario is that you go and you've got everyone in place um, but that that helped the pre-season was very hard on the players but I think we can see the rewards that they've you know, reaped since then. And pre season we looked a decent outfit. The issue being is said many times before, being involved in pre seasons that go great and then you get to the first game of the season and suddenly you've got another team up against you when it really matters and it doesn't work, you know, go the way you want and, and vice versa. So it wasn't a you know, a guarantee by any stretch of the imagination but I think it's spoken to a few people since then, perhaps so as pre-season or, you know, seeing the results here. And they, I think they said about they felt that, you know, something was probably happening at the football club that was a bit unusual and, and saw the, that we might not be a, a bad side at all. Um, I suppose moving into the new season, uh, we get to August. I picked out, I, I nearly went for a celebration of Lenny uh, at the end of... Yeah. of um, the opening day in Northampton, but I went with this one. I think Steph's second debut, as it was, sent on as a sub, and to get the winner with, I think, his first touch. I mean, you know, another another example of, of things going well for, for the new boys. Yeah, it was. Um, I thought you'd have picked Lenny's <laughs> one, in fairness, because, look, it he, he was one moment, but maybe it gave everyone the belief and confidence to get such a late winner that I think we deserved again, the way that the game had gone, but in fairness to Northampton, the way they set up, there weren't too many chances. Um, I can remember the goal and kind of celebrating and you think, oh, what are you doing? Because they very quickly got a free kick that they could put into his box. You think you're going to look silly <laughs> uh, after celebrating what you think and hope is going to be the winner. Um, but that really set us off and the performance levels, you know, results obviously great, but the performance levels were outstanding. I, you know, I think we stood on the pitch, uh, outside the pitch after the Wimbledon game, saying, "Can't believe how well you know you played that first half in particular," and quite a few, you know, a lot of the games. In fairness, I think it was Oxford August. I'm not getting ahead of myself, and I still, I know with a four nil, at Bristol Rovers first half, but I just. I thought that the, the performance at Oxford for such a long period against what is a good side was outstanding. And that was, you know, Ben Godfrey's first game that we, we you know, we didn't sort of rest on his laurels thinking, oh, that's it. The opportunity was there is someone I was keen to bring in. Mm -hmm. Credit to the chairman, he, he let me do that bit of business. And, you know, we lost Dan James, um, he went back. It was, you know, just a fantastic start to the season, albeit I didn't want to say it's a start at the time. <laughs> Still not sure what qualifies a start, yeah, as a start, but no, we, we played some good football. I think very quickly gave the fans a glimpse of, of what they might see and, and a team that I think they, you know, can now relate to of, and are proud um, to have them as the team and want to come and watch us and you know since then we've had some really good gates at, uh, at the stadium as well so at the minute it's all, all going very well. Just a quick one on deadline day, uh, I know you were working hard on that day to try and do one or two more deals or however and you didn't quite get what you wanted, um, do you still feel like that now you could have done with that one more I suppose with, with injuries that have happened recently perhaps? Two more I think. Um, you, look, you always want to get better and this is kind of, you know, I think, like I said, Ben's situation at that time proved that. We, he was someone that I was interested in, but new manager at Norwich City, he'd gone away pre-season, he was going to, or they weren't sure if he was going to be part of it all. Um, you know, and when that came round, I just thought it was something that was, I felt would be too good for us. Yeah. 
potentially to turn down. I knew that the player was very interested in joining. We wanted had good reports from the two lads that we got from that club already. And secondly, we tried to sign him previously, so he, I think, he appreciated the fact that he's got a manager, assistant manager that, you know, are keen and and like what they see. And I think he, you know, it's ironic. I had a good chat with him today, and I think he, he's loving his time here. He's, he's played a, a major part for us, and you know that that. But the players know I can't change too much, obviously, in in between the windows. But I'm, I'd like to think they know I will change come January if I don't feel people are doing the jobs. Yeah. And. Again, we're back to balancing act, but you need players to be in a place where they feel they can express themselves, but they need to stay motivated. Um, so I, I'm not a massive one, in, in all honesty, for this. All he thinks is he knows he's going to play every week, so therefore he gets the best out of him because he feels comfortable. I don't want people to feel comfortable, I want people to want to be the best. Um, and I think we, you know, we've had that for large parts of this season, and with each player. But also, credit to the players that haven't had as many, much game time, because they're the ones I said before set the tone of training. If they want to sulk, they're not in the team. That can have a knock-on effect to the other players, and and the togetherness, you know, this group of players have got is is as, you know something special for me. So I hope that they, you know, remain that tight group that I think they are, and I have to try to play my part in that, making sure that, you know, the ones like I said that aren't maybe getting the minutes, are um, are appreciated, which they certainly are. I just maybe have to make sure that whether it's myself, Doigi, other staff, whatever it is, maybe even senior players, make sure that they know that and. Um, that will keep us in good shape uh, as, as we move forward. A good time to sort of roll into September. We think of Wigan, Blackburn and the amount of fans. I think Wigan game, or certainly early in September, the, the club went top of the league. Um, but I picked out um, Doncaster uh, after getting in the pick again. Um, just something about that night for him to, to come on and get his first ever sort of football league goal that late. Yeah, that, that night was, you know, I think special for Arthur. The abiding memory, yes, that sort of telling him well done at the end of the game, but it was probably just in the dressing room after. I was saying about how we haven't really scored goals from outside the box. I looked at some stats and said to Arthur, was it inside or out? And he, he came back, he probably most have spoken, said he felt he'd touched it just inside the box. Kind of the lads just burst out laughing, and they were absolutely, you know, buzzing for for Arthur, and that's probably what stoked that night. Not if it was a gamble, because I'm doing it for the right reasons, but I felt we needed to change um, the team around because we'd had a performance Saturday to Tuesday where I didn't feel we had had the energy. Um, and I thought Doncaster, it seems a, a decent sized pitch. They moved the ball around well, that we needed to make a few changes, so I did that. Yeah. Some, some would say it's a gamble, but it was great to get a victory. And certainly, again, when we look at, you know, stats-wise, it, it sort of backed up what I, I hope would happen. But, of course, it, there's no guarantees. Uh, otherwise, we'd do that every single time. Um, but on that night, it certainly worked. Uh, I had to go for a Bristol Rovers pick. Uh, even though I missed it, I mean, you know, following the action, I was sort of scarcely believed the club were four up at the break. But what were you feeling come half time against Bristol Rovers? You want them to guard against complacency. You don't want to start the second half. If we scored four in one half, Bristol Rovers are capable mm. of doing that, albeit it shouldn't happen. Um, a reminder to a couple of players that they weren't at the best. You know, this is just me being truthful about it. Um, but that we looked a massive threat and scored some very good goals. I think the keeper should do better for the second one uh, from Bristol Rovers' point of view. But we looked a good side. 
you know, the game started off relatively even, but then when we got in front, I think we showed the confidence level. There was one spell of play just before half time that was, you know, it was like watching a team from a much higher league. Uh, and you kind of stand there thinking, well, you know, what they're doing, what's going on, they're not my players, <laughs> as well as they have done. Um, but the message was make sure you keep a clean sheet. And whether that's deemed as negative or whatever, I'd, you know, from my point of view, that it's keeping people focused. Yeah. And for the next 20, 25 minutes of the second half, we, we did it pretty well. Um, the remainder of the game, one substitutions that occurred, etc., it probably did just play out like we'd, yeah. we'd done the job. Um, and in some ways it probably is better as much as I want to push for every minute or every game with another game coming up on the Saturday. Plus we just had a, a long trip to Plymouth. You know, I didn't decide to make too many changes. I think I only made two. And again, looking after, it was a massive effort from the players. It was probably, I think, didn't quite relate to what you see with your eyes in truth. Um, so we then, after that game, cut it right back so we could go again against Fleetwood and different sort of game altogether. Yeah, but like you said, that pitch is great in terms of you know, passion, togetherness. And I, you know, I love the fact, although as late as it was, so you kind of naturally get that uh, reaction. But if you watch Toto's goal on Saturday, you know, the TV footage, and you see all the players sprinting off together. And then in the dressing room after the game, you can hear the togetherness now. I think Tim Les are about six. Um, yeah, the reaction after the game from players that hadn't been involved. I, you know, I said it on the, on the day, I, I just love that. Because that's, like I said, that is togetherness. That can't be, you know, it can't be put on, it's not a front. Mm. Um, and I think, you know, we're now in a position of a third of the season in where the players have, you know, maybe realised that they're in a, a really good place and they're challenging themselves as well as the obvious challenge that, that we as staff put to them. They still need managing. Sometimes need a little reminder. I think they needed that a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I'd have to say I think the the group are good that they understand the opportunity that's in front of them uh, and how well they have done. Uh, but it is such a competitive league with a number of clubs that will expect to be in, in the playoffs minimum. That you know we we. I think as sales in particular now, although Blackpool are doing very well, um, stand out like a sore thumb when you look around at the other teams. And there's obviously one or two that are probably quite a bit below where they still, I'm sure, with two thirds of the season left, they expect to be um, come next May. So we've got to guard against that. You know, nothing's, you know, like we spoke about as results there that were positive, and then we had a uh, a month that didn't go the way we wanted, that can quite easily happen here. It might be for longer. It might be odd, you know, odd game. Yeah. But nothing sorted in uh, in October. That's for sure. Apart from the fact we've met, made people sit up and take notice. I suppose. And like I said, it's the players that are the biggest driver in that with their performances. It doesn't matter what we do out there on the training ground if. They step over that white line and either freeze, can't be bothered, do their own thing. You know, they, it's, they've bought in, and, and rightly so, I think, because resu it's easy when you're getting results, but they've bought into what we've asked them to do. And like I said, they're getting their rewards. As staff, I think we are, you know, watching them and seeing your work carried out, like I said, and, and, and the fans have massively bought into that. So everyone I think involved with Shrewsbury Town is excited. Some at one level that's maybe getting carried away, <laughs> others maybe someone like myself um, keeping feet very firmly on the floor and still targeting genuinely that 50 point mark. Um, 
but it's a good place to be and you know we really enjoyed it it is a, a absolute dream start I'm comfortable with saying start now and who knows what you know these coming months will will hold for us but it's certainly some months that we can look forward to you know a lot better than when I first came in and, and probably you know prior to that where it, the sole target certainly once you get to that point is you know have we got a chance of staying up you know we've got a chance of a few things that we could talk about in terms of uh, targets but I, I you know I don't want to put anything on that like I said until we get to 50 points and see how many games are left how the table does sit then I'm aware of where we are but I'm still not one that sits and stares at the table at this point it's, it's pointless um, but eventually I will, like I said, when we get to that point and have a real look and see what is realistic at that point. Overall, what um, 90 minutes, what game do you think has been the best performance? Uh, it's quite hard to take things in context, but... I've mentioned it before, and it, again, it might sound silly because of the result in terms of the results we've had this season and to talk about a draw but was probably Oxford I think um, uh, not MK Don sorry yeah <laughs> get into trouble there won't I? yeah Wimbledon first half was very very good but I think that would maybe on the back of they'd had a extra time right. couldn't change and that's you still got to beat them and they showed second half they did have the energy but perhaps took them a bit of time to get going we looked very comfortable on the ball, but I think going to Oxford was probably, if you're going to talk about teams that I, you know, think can be right up there, that was the biggest test of the season today, and to go there and just almost go, we we're here, bring it on. The lads played so well and, and could have had the victory with Carlton's goal, obviously that. Well, lack of goal, but that went over the line, um, and again showed spirit as well at going behind, away from home, to um, to make sure that we had a, a journey on where we took something from the game. The, the probably the best game as a spectacle for neutral or whatever, probably the Charlton game, because of how many goals were involved in it. Some good goals as well. The emotion of being in, I think we were in front, I think I'm right, then behind and then winning the game. Um, but it wasn't the best performance overall because if you let three goals in, it's probably something not quite right. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd go the Oxford game. Thank you for your time on that, Paul. Thank you.